this is the Fiat Ducato Elysio, and at Road Surfer, it's called the Roadhouse Elysio. I'm going to show you what it has to offer. Here, directly behind the door, you can already see our kitchen. Not only can you cook standing up, but it's very practical that the steam can be let out immediately out the door. One thing that I find super convenient is that you can access your cool box from the outside and quickly grab a beer. There's even a freezer compartment for ice cubes and food. The cool box not only opens from the outside, but also from the inside. Super practical. You can switch on the fridge here by holding this button down. Here you can see that it is already switched on and you can see which level you have selected. If you press it once and press it again twice, the symbol here will come front and center. Then you can turn the wheel to adjust the level, making it weaker or colder. The best setting is right in the middle. Press again to confirm and then the cool box will be running. When you want to turn it off, just press and hold down the button and when you hear it beep, that means the cool box is turned off. One more hot tip. If the cool box doesn't turn on when you press here, just start the engine, let it run for a bit and try it again while it's running. Once the motor is running, click here and it should definitely start working. You've probably already seen your road surfer living area. And to make it even easier to get in and out, you can extend a step here by pressing this switch once. When you continue your journey on the road, you need to retract it. But for now, you can get on quite comfortably here. Come on into the living room. If you want to have more space here at the table, to eat for example, you can enlarge the table further. To do this, find this black knob underneath and pull it down. You can extend the table like this and sit in the corner, for example. Or you can pull the knob down again and you can fully extend it like this. If you want to sit at a table with four people, you can easily turn the two front seats around. To do this, pull this lever here and swivel the seats around. Now you can make yourselves truly comfortable. Here, under the table, you have another emergency hatch. Here you will find, for example, the first aid kit, safety yellow vests, a warning triangle and a brush. Here you have two gas hot plates. I'll show you how to turn on the gas in a moment. You have a sink with running water. You can do the dishes or even brush your teeth. Then you have various drawers with lots of storage space for food and other things. There's also a cutlery drawer up here. Cutlery and other kitchen utensils come in a kitchen box prepared for you by Road Surfer. Here you have several light switches to turn on the lights throughout the bus. Here is a 230 volt socket and here is another one. However, this only works if the bus is connected to the outside power supply, for example at the campsite, similar to this 12 volt socket. You have lots of storage compartments throughout the bus where you can stow lots of luggage. Here, for example, is a compartment where you can even hang something up, whether it's a rubbish liner or a jacket. There is space for storage everywhere. You can store a lot of items in here. And everywhere you have hidden USB ports where you can plug in a mobile phone. You also have USB ports at the back, another socket, light switches, a large storage compartment here, and two more areas where you can put more items. And when you close the lockers, it's important that you press these buttons in the middle so that the lockers don't accidentally open during the journey. You can load a lot of stuff in the boot of the van. You have a lot of space here for luggage and other equipment. You can even load things through this little hole, perfect for skis. But you can also remove this partition and load surfboards and all kinds of things that are particularly long. We also provide you with chairs and an outdoor table, as well as a kitchen box with everything you need for cooking. Here you also have a cable to connect to electricity.
What I find super practical is that you have a huge fly screen here. If you grab this in the middle, it won't break. Pull it out very gently and you can sit in the bus in the evenings with the door open and not get stung. But be careful when it's dark that you don't accidentally bump into it or walk through it while it's closed. You have a useful navigation system. If you still want to attach a mobile phone or a tablet, you can pull up on this lever and flip it upwards. When you open it up, then you can place a mobile phone or a tablet in here, or even pin notes right here. Like the shopping list, or did we buy beer? Check. Tick the box below. You can pin it here. You can darken all the windows in the bus, of course, these up front too. To do this, pinch here once. Then you can slowly pull this forward along the bar at the bottom and hook it here. You can also darken the windscreen. Again, pinch here like this and slowly pull the blinds together. Do the same for the other side and then you can simply join them together using the magnetic closing. In the back, you have your big cozy bed. What I find extremely convenient is that you don't have to unfold or convert anything. The bed is always ready for you, so to speak, and has a neat slatted frame and a nice thick foam mattress. You also have three windows in your bedroom that you can open. Additionally, you have a fly screen in every window to keep the bugs out. If you click here below, you can also choose to darken it. The bed is really comfortable. It's six feet long and two people can lay here comfortably. You not only have this super cozy bed down here, but also a huge bed upstairs. It's two meters by one meter 40. To expand the roof, first loosen the two straps here. Next, turn metal part around once, and then the loops here will also come loose. Once you've released it, you only have to press upwards and the roof will continue to open by itself. To climb up top, you'll need a ladder. It's stored up here. You can simply pull it down and if you can't reach it, you can climb onto the cushions after you've taken off your shoes. But never climb on the table. Exactly. The ladder consists of two parts and they are both up top. You put them together like this and they lock together here. Then you can hook the ladder onto the hooks and climb on up. Up top, you have a large, super comfortable mattress. There are also three windows. You can open them like this. They even have fly screens so that the mosquitoes don't get in. You also have an LED light, a reading lamp, and a USB port to charge your mobile phone. This net here is a child safety lock net. It clips in here so that no one can fall at night. If you want to retract the roof again to continue your journey, please close all windows up top. You can leave bedding and a few smaller things up here, but make sure they're lying flat so that the roof doesn't bulge. Take care when climbing down. Don't climb on the table. Only go down using the ladder. Put the ladder back in place and pull down on this black strap. It is best to pull down in the center and make sure that the canvas is all tucked inside and not stuck anywhere on the outside. If you have someone with you, it's best to send someone outside to keep an eye on it and make sure that the fabric is completely inside. Then close the hinges like this. Twist these closed and close the clamps on both sides.
Here you have your wet room with a shower and toilet. Up here you have a few storage compartments where you can store various things. To use the shower, pull out the shower head and hook it like this. It is very important that you fix the shower curtain before you take a shower so that the walls don't soften and so that no water runs into the bus. To ensure that the shower curtain holds properly and is in the right place, put it over the shower head like this and then use the buttons here to fasten the curtain all the way around the wet room. And then you can stand here and shower. Be sure to close the door when showering so that no water runs into the bus. When you're finished showering, be sure to take the shower curtain off to dry properly. Don't leave it hanging like that, otherwise it will unfortunately rot. You can hang it right here on this bar to dry. Once it's dry, you can obviously use the bar for a towel or something else. Not only can you use the shower in here, you can also put it out through this window and enjoy an outdoor shower. The window allows you to always have fresh air when you need to ventilate and to use the shower outdoors to rinse the sand off your feet before you get on the bus, for example. If you want to have hot water in your shower, you must open the gas cylinder at the back. I've shown you how to do that. And then here, behind this hatch, you must turn this switch once so it is in the horizontal position in order for the water heater to work. This is the frost protection. The button should always be pressed and the lever in the front across. So not like this, but like this. If it is below 6 degrees, the water heater will naturally drain itself. That's why if you want hot water, make sure that it is warmer than 6 degrees inside your van. You can press the button and everything should work nicely. In order to take a shower, you will have to change the onboard computer settings. Just click once on this button and turn the wheel until the symbol lights up. Click on it again and now you can see the settings and you can select either Eco, Hot or Boost. When you're done, don't forget to turn everything off. Turn this once from right to left so that it turns off and closes the gas tap here and close the gas bottle at the back as well. This here is the toilet. It even moves around if you need more room to take a shower. You can rotate it a little bit to the side to make more space. When you go to the toilet, you have to move this lever first. Push it to the right and the hatch will open and you can do your business. When finished, you press the blue button so the toilet flushes and when it is done, you just move this lever left again. Here behind the toilet, you can see from this green dot that the tank is not yet full. When it is full, it is red and then you have to empty the cassette. Next, you will find the tank from the toilet here. To open it, First unlock it, then press both buttons at the same time and open the hatch like this. And now you can see the cassette here. There is a blue lever down here. Pull it up. And then you can remove the cassette and take it to the dump station where you can empty it. To empty it, rotate this tube outward. Remove the blue cover at the front and keep this blue button pressed down so that everything drains properly. The special thing about the Roadhouse Elysio is that you're completely self-sufficient. You have a sink, a shower and a toilet inside. To ensure that you always have enough water, you should fill the tank here on the outside of the bus. It holds 100 litres, 
And the best thing to do is to take a hose from the campsite and put it directly in here. Of course, you can also use a jerry can if necessary, but it takes a bit longer. It is important that you empty both the fresh water and wastewater tanks at the end of your trip. And I'll show you where to do that now. If you remove the cushion at the back here and open the hatch, you will see the fresh water tank here. By turning this black wheel once, it will open and drain underneath the bus. You can see that quite well underneath. It is important that at the end of your journey, you drain both the freshwater tank and the wastewater tank. To drain the wastewater tank, you need this little crank here. You will find it in the boot, and here is your wastewater tank. To drain it, plug the crank in here and pull it upwards. I won't do that now because we are in nature and we certainly don't want to pollute it. At campsites, however, you will find places designated for this purpose. There are usually large grates in the area. You drive onto them, and then you can drain out your wastewater. If you want to refuel, you have to open this hatch here. This is the diesel tank, and directly below is the AdBlue tank. You have to refill the AdBlue about every 5,000 kilometers. This is also indicated in the onboard computer. There is a light that says, please refill AdBlue. You can get it at any petrol station, and it goes in here. Next, we have the power connection. Right here is where you can connect the outside power unit at the campsite with the cable. This will also charge your second battery inside, so you can use all the sockets. This is the vent for the auxiliary heater. The smell is very unpleasant and must not enter the van under any circumstances. Therefore, you should always keep this window closed when the auxiliary heater is on. You have another small storage room here. If you open it up, you will see two gas bottles. This is the spare cylinder. We don't need that one for now, but we need the back one for cooking and for the auxiliary heating. And if you want to do one of the two, either cooking or heating, then you have to turn on the gas bottle by turning the wheel on top. It is also very important that you turn it back off again after cooking or after you have used the auxiliary heating so that gas does not accidentally flow into the bus. And now I'll show you which other levers, switches and tips you should know about. For example, in order to cook, you have to open the gas bottle at the back and then behind this hatch, you will find another gas tap. There is a cooking pot symbol on it, which means to get gas, you must turn the switch so the gas flows to the cooker. Good. And then you can turn on the cooker here using these buttons. After cooking, you should certainly close the gas tap again. This one and the bottle too. This is the outlet for the auxiliary heater. The smell is very unpleasant and must not enter the van under any circumstances. Therefore, you should always keep this window closed when the heater is on. To use the auxiliary heater in the van, Open the gas cylinder at the rear, find the auxiliary heater symbol behind the hatch, and rotate the lever so that gas flows to the heater. Next, go to the onboard computer up above. Click on the button once, and you will see the van is flashing. This is for the auxiliary heater. Click on it again. By turning the wheel, you can choose the temperature you want the bus to be heated to. For example, 20 degrees. And you confirm it by clicking it again. If you keep turning the wheel, you can click on this symbol here, and that will start the heat right away and get warm very quickly. Confirm again, and now the auxiliary heater is working. And when you want to turn it off, just turn the knob to the left until it says off. And remember to close the gas valve including the big gas bottle at the back. Of course, your van comes with a canopy. To open it, you need a crank, which you will find here at the back. Be careful not to hit your head on the bike rack when you open the door.
The crank is here. Don't hesitate to climb on this step to reach it. If you still can't reach at this level, you can extend the bar further. Just unscrew it and extend it like this, then tighten it. And that's it. Here at the top is the hook where you can hook the crank and extend out the awning. You can keep turning until you reach the legs of the blind. Here on the outer edge, you have to pull here and the leg comes out this way. If you pull down on this piece here, you can extend the legs downwards. Use your foot to hold the bar at the bottom and you can extend the rest of the pole upwards. Then lock in this clip here. Sometimes it's a little tricky, but don't be afraid. Push it firmly upwards until it clicks and then repeat this on the other side. After that, you can continue to extend the awning and continue moving the legs a little further each time. To sit comfortably under the huge awning, there is a table and two chairs. They are here at the back. Let's bring them outside. The assembly of the table is quite simple. Lift these bars up and hook them in here and secure it with this lever. You will do the same thing with the four table legs. Extend them and secure them with the lever. And the backrest is even adjustable so you can sit back and relax.